What's up, Denver? Chris Lopez here, and today we're sitting down with Jeff White, and we're going to dissect his story over the last seven years from living in a really cool condo with a high monthly car payment to someone that switched, saw the power of real estate investing and house hacking, and over the next six, seven years has accumulated seven or eight properties, and with the next year, will be retiring from his W-2 job. So awesome story. We got Jeff here to give us a play-by-play. Jeff, what's up, man? Doing great, great. I'm just doing, uh, doing well and just happy to be here to share the story. I am too. Yeah. And I forgot, like, you know, we've been working there so long. I think it's like, what, five or six years ago. Yeah. We were getting prepped on here. Like, oh, yeah, previously I had this expensive condo, this G37. I was like, oh, my gosh, I totally <laughs> forgot about this Jeff White here. Like, so we got the tale of two Jeff Whites here. Yes. So just rewind us to, um, to this Jeffrey White that I did not know, who had an expensive car payment yes. and a cool condo with a spiral staircase. Yeah, so it's Jeffrey White version two, and now I'm version one. So it's two different versions we're talking about. So going back to version two, uh, basically- so How's your older self version two? That's <laughs> so version I guess, one, you're upgraded. Oh yeah, yeah. So, Come on, get it right, man. <laughs> so That's version 1.0. We got version 2.0, the yes. better Jeff. All the way around. <laughs> <laughs> you could point, yeah, it's hard to go down. So yeah, going back, just looking back in time to 2016, uh, the story really starts um, even before that, really. I was 33 years old, working a nine to five job, and I you know, had my W-2 salary. I was doing well. And here's the, the best part. I had the, the cool condo that you mentioned in the intro was like the dream condo. It took 50 properties before I picked that one. That's how annoying I was to the realtor. Thanks, mom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 50 properties. My friend, it had is like, it was a high ceilings, loft style. I had a cool duck pond out in the uh, outside the window. Uh, everything I wanted, like everything I wanted. I had the cool condo. I had my G37. Uh, it was the car I dreamed about. It was all wheel drive, uh, turbocharged, 320 horsepower, uh, 15 miles per gallon, premium gas. Cost me 700 bucks a month to have it, but you know, I was happy. So that was Jeff version 1.1. Um, and basically paying with that condo, I was paying uh, 1500 bucks a month to live there for that uh, mortgage and HOA. Uh, no roommates, nothing, just enjoying life and my car and my W-2 and spending time with uh, my girlfriend at the time. So what happened? From there, it was a book I read. And the book I read was Mark Ferguson, who's a realtor up in Greeley. Yep. Actually, it was kind of a small world how everything's related, tied together to Colorado somehow, like bigger pockets, but up in Greeley. And How to Build a Rental Property Empire just was part of I read that book myself. Yeah. It's a yeah. Good book. And the reason I got it uh, to even go back a little bit more was her, my wife's sister was in duplex actually. So this is where it really triggered me to go find this book. So going back a little bit more, so this is still towards the tail end of 2016, the wife's sisters lives in a duplex, one side of the duplex, and mm -hmm. the owner, owner's husband dies and they're trying to sell it. Um, so basically my wife was like, hey, why don't you just buy it? But why would I buy it? Like I'm in my dream condo. Like that, that's pretty much the thing I really am happy with, like I have my car, I got the condo, I got the girlfriend, I got everything I want, everything's stable, everything's normal. But it opened my eyes like, wait a minute, why did I say no to that? Like, I know I learned about real estate investing years prior to that, and then I was out of it, and then that drew me back in, and that's how I found Mark Ferguson's How to Build a Rental Property Empire book. And when I picked up that book after I didn't buy this duplex, I stayed in my condo. I was like, I'm happy. Why, do I, why would I leave my cool condo? And that's the truth. So I just stayed in my condo, didn't buy the duplex, sister had to move. Uh, and now, but it led me to change to do more research. Like, hey. You got the real estate bug? Yeah. I got, it opened it back up and said, okay, let me find out more information about real estate investing. And then that's where I learned in that book, there was two paragraphs that talked about the concept of house hacking. That was it. It wasn't like the book talk. It, the book was very good, but that that two paragraphs is what I remember the most. And it mentioned buy a two to four unit and live in one unit, rent out the other. It's a very simple concept. And I was like, huh, like why don't why don't I do this? Like I'm already um, living in kind of a multifamily complex in my condo. 
not living next to tenants, but I'm living next to other people, owners or people renting. So it's kind of similar concept. You have neighbors. Yeah. And then he mentioned like how you can live for free, how it's all these benefits to it. And that's where the journey really began and my whole thought process changed from that moment forward and end of 2016. All right. And then I know what, throughout this time, you had started doing out-of-state investing. Yep. I don't want to take too much of a detour, but you did that, I think, in Tennessee. Yep. And long story short is you did it, and you came back, and you house stacked in Denver, right? Yes. So we got other podcasts where we dive into that, but just want to highlight that there because people often ask us, hey, should I house hack or should I invest out of state? Well, uh, my general recommendation is either like do both or house hack. Yep. I don't think investing out of state is like the best first move for many people. I think house hacking or buying your primary is usually like the best move for most people. So you came to that conclusion as well. Yep. And so what we're going to do here is go through what the seven or eight properties that you have now house hacked. Yep. How many have you done now? Seven? So eight total properties, eight. seven house hacks. And I can give you kind of, so I gave you the picture on the front end, 2016. Yeah. And I'll give you like fast forward to seven years later, like today. Um, I'm 39 years old. I'm an old man. Um, I'm not a spring chicken anymore, Chris. <laughs> I still have my nine to five. And now instead of paying the negative 1500 bucks every single month, um, I am making $8,000 per month. Jeez. Yeah. And, uh, you know, dismanaging those properties and basically instead of being 30 years from retirement, like the standard 65 ish time period, um, most people retire, I'm you know, under one year to retirement where I could, you know, do whatever I want to do. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. All right. So how, how did that start? How did it start? What was your first house act? Yeah. So going back to, so 2016 rolls around 2017, the new year pushes and the, I wanted to buy a two to four unit. I was obsessed. I was like, I'm going to find a duplex, triplex or quad. That was it. Yep. I wasn't even thinking about any other strategy at that time. That was it. I was very laser focused. <clears throat> so I found a four unit over in uh, West Denver and checked all the boxes. It's like, all right, I live in one unit, rent out the others and it's work. And that one was, uh, and to give you background on myself too, is I didn't even own a hammer, if you could believe that. I didn't have a background in construction. I didn't have contractors, friends, no one that like said, oh, well, I could just rely on this other person to help me. I, I didn't own a hammer. I had no background in constructions. I was good at typing. That was my talent, Chris. I'm a, I could type 95 <laughs> words a minute, but I can't you know, do stuff with my hands. Like some people are very good at it. So, um, no hammer <laughs> going to this property in 2017, the four unit, and it needs everything. It needs every single thing is wrong with it. But the good news is even going through a property that need everything and, uh, every repair possible, it still made sense. So I was still able to live for a few hundred bucks a month, um, during that year of owning that property. So it still worked out. So even the worst type of property, and I literally started with the one that needed every single thing. That well, was, plus they had like yeah. bed bugs, right? No, like, not on that one. That was not that one. Yeah, okay. that was a different one before that. We were on ah, contract. Okay. This one was just cockroaches. Yeah, that one. Yes, yeah, so I had mold, cockroaches, tile falling off the walls, purple carpet, uh, high gloss paint in a basement. Uh, we had to repaint every square inch, new baseboards, new flooring, new tile, new fixtures. Uh, we didn't move in for like two months because it was that much that worn down. Yeah. So, so one thing I want, I want to highlight here, cause I'd known you bought this, you use an FHA down payment Yep. and we talk about this a lot in our other house hacking content. You know, right now we are in the middle of our house hacking, like webinar series, our six part webinar series on how can you house hack in Denver mm -hmm. at six or 7% interest rates. So back then this 2016, you're buying a fourplex FHA, 2017. 2017 yeah. Thank you. Um, you ran into the self-sufficiency test, yeah. which is where the FHA says 75% of the rents must cover the PITI plus mortgage insurance. So it's a big chunk of money. The property failed and you brought down like 7%? Yes. Right? So on FHA is normally 3.5%. Uh, but because of that test, even in 2017, which people that are like, oh my God, if I bought in 2017, it's a great deal. It still didn't pass the test. So no. I still had to bring a larger down payment uh, of 7% for this property and deal with all the repairs on top of that. So it was great learning experience. Uh, you know, I have um, more experience now doing, like it taught me, we had, you know, deal with eviction, contractors, oh, yeah. like we had to deal with a little bit of everything. And we built those systems up. And that's where it leads into a, a one year later where we uh, pivoted our strategy to the second house hack. 
All right. We'll talk about that. Yeah. And actually, last thing I'm going to say on the FHA fourplex triplex, we get this question all the time now. Yeah. Things have only gotten harder. If yeah. you want to do an FHA fourplex triplex, you're like 20% down. If you have no clue what we're talking about, talk to us or go check out our house hacking webinar series because yeah. it's a very, very important thing. All right. So did the fourplex and you're pivoting to another strategy yeah. of an asset class. Why? Yes. So what I learned was two to four units in the Denver metro area are usually run down, have a lot of deferred maintenance, um, very expensive on top of that because they're competing against other investors that have way more capital than majority of uh, first time, second time home buyers. So all those factors, we realized like, you know what, we're not going to try to repeat just buying a multi-fit two to four unit every single time. Yep. Let's pivot the strategy. And this is where you helped us. We found the, the yeah, podcast. Yeah, we got in touch right before you bought the yeah, property. Yeah, I found your podcast. This is when you had it with uh, Charles Roberts, and I was listening to it. And I was like, hey, I want to work with this guy. And um, you talked about uh, you know different houses. Like, you understood the strategy. You know, exactly. You understood me. You completed me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Wow. Well, didn't know we're going there today, but all right. Keep talking. And basically, <laughs> not just yet. <laughs> <laughs> But basically, uh, this is when you were still an agent and yep. you actually showed me some properties. And this is one you found. It was a Northland property and it was just an up down style where it had a mother in law in the basement and upstairs was just like another, so like two, like up down duplex basically. Yeah. It's like three bed, one bath up top or three, three bed, two top. bath. Okay. And then three bed, one bath below. Oh. And then we just did two stress. So they're like, okay, well, we know how to do long term rental strategy from the four unit. So let's try, uh, we just, we'll just repeat that strategy upstairs. And then downstairs, we'll do um, rent by room. That's the first time we started rent by room is during that time. And we took, so Lake and myself just took the basement room. Yep. And with that, we were easily cash flowing 1200 bucks a month living there. Well, yeah, I think you added, you added another bedroom in the basement too, right? Didn't you add a um, room in there? No, it was already set up. Was it? Okay. Yeah, it was already set up really nicely. Okay. It wasn't any, it was just kind of, Updating some of the uh, the kitchen a little bit down that basement unit. So you bought that place, North Glen. Yep. Five uh, percent down conventional. Yep. That's mother in law where, suite. Yep. Um, oh, that's difference too. So that's a good point. Point point out is all these ones are single. Where we pivoted, we went to a single family property that with the right zoning, and you could use five percent down conventional loans instead of that FHA or worrying about FHA. Uh, so that the five percent down conventional is an amazing bargain, and if you find these right properties, it makes a huge difference. And just to uh, like a quick pro tip here is like FHA can only really have one loan out at a time. They can only buy one fourplex at a time at a very low down payment. Five percent down conventional in single family homes, you can do as long as you want for as many properties as you want. Yep, and that's a much more repeatable strategy to do multiple house acts to build your house act stack. Yep, that was where we figured. Like we found the. The perfect property, like this one was move-in ready, mostly just a few cosmetic things and 5% down conventional. So that was a huge savings for us. We can move in right away. And the net net numbers on this, this is where it really went up, uh, 1200 bucks a month just by utilizing two strategies while living there. Why you, li why you live there? You're making 12 hours yes. a month? Yeah. And it's at a 4.875 rate, if you could believe that number. Well, so I can't what, believe it. Yeah. <laughs> So that one, uh, that's where it started. Like, hey, we figured out our little niche. We're like, hey, yeah. we, we finally figured out. We thought two to four units was the one path we're going to take. I even had it all uh, forecasted out. I was like, because, you know, like the numbers, like, okay, if we buy 10 four units, we'll have 40 units in 10 years at 500 bucks a month cash. I was like, don't you always look, oh, here's the plan. <laughs> and you're like, oh, reality. The plan reality don't <laughs> <Yes>. match up. <laughs> but then we realized like this, the second house hack and 2018 now was what really um, elevated us to just scale up to the each one. Like yeah. income snowball hit. So we're like, okay, now we're, we rented out the unit that we moved out of the four unit. So that's cash flowing. And now the second one's cash flowing 1200 bucks a month. And we're no longer paying that negative 1500. So if you add up all those, we're pretty much not only living for free, but we're making cash flow every month. So you can see how slowly but surely, uh, the income snowball, the house hacking, stacking method is growing each year. Yep. Yeah. And then from there, you kind of go in this rinse repeat cycle. Yep. You go from uh, this house hacking North Glen to number three, which I think was 
West Denver, right? Yeah. So now we're down by near Belmar, like West Denver. And that one was similar to the Northland one. The only difference was we were introduced. Um, it was up, down, same thing. So four bed, two bath upstairs, three bed, one bath downstairs. But the downstairs one was section eight. And that's where we got introduced to that strategy. Yep. We didn't even know what that was. I didn't, I've heard about it, but I didn't know how to deal with it. So we, you know, Learn what Section 8 was. It was a choir tenant, so we had to learn. And I found it was like, oh, wow, this is a great strategy. That's very much you get guaranteed rent. Yeah, you um, get the government rent, and they're yeah. usually great tenants. Yeah, and they don't want to move. So all my Section 8 since that time, since 2019 on this third house hack, the rent center repeater, um, none of my Section 8s have moved since that time. Like, they're still there today. Yeah. Yeah. It's I'm not surprised to hear that. Yeah. So you're, you're living there. Yep. Another 5% down conventional property. 5% down conventional. Um, and this was like this one that's like really like small pockets we found where it was like kind of a, a newer uh, cul-de-sac of yep. like what, six or seven or eight modular homes. Yeah. Um, and I was uh, um, with an HOA of like 10 bucks a month. Yeah. I think you were the HOA president for a couple and of years And I'm the well. president Are somehow. you still the president? Yeah, I'm still the president. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, an, oh, it's one of those things where it's just an awesome community. And then like a couple years later, another client of ours actually bought the house like right next door. Literally to right next door. We're like, yeah. oh, like, I know that address. <laughs> Wait, why do I address? I go, that's just White Place. Oh, that's there? Yeah, just go buy it. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know. Very interesting side story there. So House Act Three yep. to House Act Four. So this was you bought and cut. Uh, you bought here in twenty nineteen. Nineteen, and that one was even better than the second one. So we went from twelve hundred to fifteen. Yeah, this was a cash car. I remember. Yeah, this one was built in two thousand one. It was basically as rent ready. Like needed just a few like an AC repairs, some modifications to one of the doors, and just a clean like a little cleanup, but lowest cost. Uh, to repair it because it was like built in 2001. Like what? What is it? How much does a 2001 property really need? And then five percent down conventional again. And that one we got uh, fifteen hundred dollars per month cash flow. So you see, we're doing a little bit better each one. We're learning new things and finding better properties. Yeah, no, yeah. but that's the way you do. You, yeah. Hey, here's a strategy. Let's refine and get better. Yep. All right. So property number four. And was this before or after COVID? This is right. Property four was right when COVID's. Right after COVID started. Okay. Yeah. So early 2020. Yep. Right after COVID started. And what was the house and where was it at? Yeah. So this one was just a little south of house act number three. So southwest Denver. And this one was our behemoth. It was a 10 bed, four bath place, like a triplex, 5% down conventional, correct zoning. And basically, uh, we did uh, two strategies, um, section eight again. And then rent by room because we we are refining our like you just said we're refining our processes we're better each time we know what we're looking for we know how to rent it out and this one was um, you know it was updated but it needed a little more update than the last one but even with that it was our best deal yet from all these other house hacks so we got up to seventeen hundred dollars per month cash flow while living there while living there because Gosh, it was so insane, massive dude. and the section eight rents were paying so much. Like I have a fourplex <laughs> that makes seventeen hundred two thousand dollars a month in cash flow, yeah, which is great. Yeah, that's yeah. great. But it's insane that you got a house and does the same yeah. thing, and you're house hacking while you're living there. Yes, I'm not looking at the fourplex at the moment. And this, uh, you know, during COVID, rates just went way down. And this one we got at like two point six, so that was awesome. And the one before that was um, the house act three was like three point eight percent. So rates are lower, um, and we weren't afraid of COVID hitting us. We're like which can still utilize the strategy. And with Section 8, the big pro of Section 8 is recession-proof. Yeah. You don't have to worry if Government the, tenant, guaranteed. the tenant has a job or not. They could uh, get fired, quit, and then the housing authority covers 100% of yeah. the rents. So it's that's the beautiful thing about it. All right. So house hack number four here, yep. the 10-bedroom, going to house hack number five. Yeah. So this one, um, now we're in 2021, and this is where – we found like the holy grail of uh, house hacks. So it's the two houses on one lot. Mm. And so you get the best of both worlds. You get the 5% down conventional again. And during this time, the rates were still, we had 2.8% rate. And it's like a detached duplex. So we take, and usually on these, the front house is bigger than the small house. Front house is four bed, two bath. Back house was one bed, one bath. We took the back house, rented out the front house to like rent by room style to four guys. And even with that, we got full privacy, had a little, little, our own little tiny house at 750 square feet. And at that point it was 
still cash like because the rate was amazing. We got five hundred bucks a month cash flow on that one. So with e- privacy in your home, with your own home, detached. Yeah. yeah, our own separate driveway, own privacy, our own little tiny house. Yeah, full I, I remember that property. I like it. Yeah, it was. Uh, that's why they're the holy grail um, of finding. Like they're out there, but they're just not that. But they're like great because they qualify for the five percent down. I mean, see, I mean, up to here, you're at house number five yep. or house hack number five plus your condos. So six properties all together. Yeah. And that's the first house with an ADU, right? Yep. That's the yep. first one. Yeah. At all these. So, so yeah. I want to highlight that because a lot of times people get fixed. Oh, I need an ADU. Yep. Right. They're, uh, they all sound good. Half the properties ADUs are just completely junk properties most of the time, it yep. seems. Um, but you do find some once in a while. Yeah. But you can see, here's the interesting thing. It works out really well but actually cash flowed less than the mother-in-law suite properties. So don't get fixed on ADUs. Yep. I get this question all the time. I know you do as well, yeah. but like... Yeah, no, I think uh, they're wonderful if you find them, but they're just super rare. Probably 100 total all of Denver Metro. So out of like tens of thousands of homes, maybe 100,000 homes, they're like 0.1% of that. Yeah. So it's like, if you find it, great, but they're going to be usually need work and not all of them will cash flow. All right, so property number five. Yep. And then moving on to property number six. What'd you do here? Yeah, so this is right um, about a year ago. So right when interest rates were slowly creeping up, when the economy, uh, we're getting out of COVID, uh, it was the turnkey rent by room house house. Oh, yep. So this is like probably the most move-in ready property we ever bought. It was... Gorgeous house in Lakewood. Uh, needed basically nothing. We just added a bathroom, but it was immaculate condition, super clean. Already had a separate entrance uh, to one of the rooms, and we just rented out six rooms and took one ourselves. And even with the rates going up, uh, we were still clearing a thousand bucks a month. What was the purchase price and the rate at the time? So six seventeen was purchase price, and the rate was four percent. Okay. Yeah, and. Anyway, Here's also an added bonus. So uh, my wife during this whole time was paying me rent. So that's why my numbers look better while I'm living there. Uh, but it, she understood the thought process of like why. And that was it helped me qualify for each one going forward. Yep. So that was a huge help. So, it was great planning. Yes. <laughs> and you're a lucky guy. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> Still pay me rent today. She's playing Monopoly with you, yeah, man. Yeah. All right. So six property here. Yep. Um, six hundred thousand plus purchase price. Rates are going up. And I mean, you're just like here, here's the thing. Like you're noticing a pattern here. Like it's. I mean, I don't want to like make it. You know, it, you're just kind of doing the same thing over and over again. Yep. And this is the key a lot of times to success. Success in real estate. Success in life. Success in business. Whatever. You find something that works. And you keep doing it. Like, don't reinvent the wheel. Like, hey, this works in the market. Or someone like Jeff has done this. This strategy works. Repeat it. Model it. And Jeff found the strategy and just kept modeling it with, hey, refinement, refinement, refinement along the way while also balancing market conditions and reality because, you know, you're not changing the market. You're adapting the market. Yeah. And I know which strategy works best for the market conditions and the property type. So I'm not like forcing the square peg around hole and saying, okay, I'm only going to do Airbnb. That's the only strategy I'm going to do. And forcing it on each property. I'm like, okay, I'm using a couple strategies here. Uh, Rent by room, long-term, like just normal long-term rental and section eight. And just combining using one or the other or a little bit of both just to maximize for that property type. Yep. Yeah. All right, so you got that, and yep. then moved on to the seventh place, which yes. is what you're currently living in now. Yeah, so I didn't have to stay at the sixth one a full year. Like most prop, all, most of these properties, it was basically one year, maybe a little bit under like eleven months, but it's about one year commitment to for each of these loans. That's the rule you have to fulfill. Yep. Uh, so we got married, and I had a change of life circumstance. I was yes. holding the bag this whole time. Uh, and I utilized that change of life uh, to you know, only had to wait six months to buy house hack number seven in December of 2022. And where's this one at? This one is over in um, Aurora. Right. Okay. And it's a unicorn. Du- it's a unicorn duplex. How's the unicorn? Because as remember, I mentioned from the beginning, the two to four units usually are junk properties. Or oh, oh trust me. I, I know. <laughs> I know how it goes. I've, I've seen them. I'm like, oh, this, this is this a duplex? This one had... Egress windows, fully remodeled, uh, needed basically just like some like minor cosmetic things. It was like moving ready as I've ever seen a duplex. And it was in the middle of November, December when I was looking at it. So no competition. Yep. Moving ready Great duplex time to buy. and can negotiate 
solid credits. I got the roof. I got a whole, the, I had the seller file claim. Looking back, that the, November, December timeframe was such a great place to yeah. buy. It was yeah. such a great time to buy. No competition. Yeah. Yeah. Because who wants to move in the middle of December? Well, no. Plus the rate, <laughs> the economy, it was yeah. like the double or triple whammy. Exactly. And now we're in the spring and it's already, all right, multiple offers on property yes. again. Yes. All right. So, do, and what part of Aurora this, is this in? So, the uh, kind of the near Fitzsimmons over yep. there. So, on the other I side, 225. Part, yep. And it was five bed, two bath duplex on each side. So, it was big enough where I could utilize um, two strategies again. So, we're doing section eight on the other side of the duplex. We took the upstairs. What's section eight right now for a five bedroom over there? 3,000. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because they go off bedroom. Yo, I know that's, yeah. 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 I haven't, to get, wow, great, yeah. man. Yeah. Good for you. Yes. And then, uh, so we took, so the way it's configured is two bed, one bath upstairs, three bed, one bath downstairs. So on our side, we just walled off where the basement goes and we're going to rent by room, the basement, three bed, one bath, section eight, the other side, five bed, two bath. Yep. And we have the full, like our own little unit again at 6% rate. And we're still cash flowing 500 bucks a month on this one at a 6%. So this is what's so great. I mean, like you see the strategy here, yep. you know, you've adapted and you moved and based on location, the mm -hmm. property layout, um, the interest rate environment, you're always adapting, but you're finding ways to make it work. Yep. Now is this property, this unicorn duplex roar, is it cash flowing as much as other properties? No, it's not. No. But here's what a uh, house hackers don't get fixated on. Don't get fixated on the cash flow or why you're living there. That is great for savings, you know, saving money that month or making some money, but it's not wealth building. Hmm. The wealth building aspect is that you have done seven house hacks. Yes. I know you've done a 1031, you own some more properties, but you've done seven house hacks yep. to go out there and build your monopoly board. And that's the key right there. Yeah. It's like you didn't fix it. Oh, I got to make this cash or this or this. Like you did it, you made it work, but you kept buying more properties, which is what wins in the long run. Yeah. And I, I guess I look at it, I started at negative 1500 going back to the original condo. Uh, with my G37, you know, I was the happiest person. Jeff version 1.1 you've ever seen, right? I had my G37. I don't like that, Jeff, man. I don't like that, Jeff. <laughs> cool condo, spiral staircase, duck pond, no tools, no hammer. Uh, and to, till now, uh, positive 8000 So live for free and get positive $8,000 cash flow. I have a toolbox now and uh, hammers and other fun tools and drills. Uh know how to deal with contractors, know how to deal with uh, tenants, um, six years of landlord experience. And I wouldn't have gotten there if I didn't start with that first one. Yep. Even though the first one was technically the worst one, it gave us the, I guess, we just want to live for free. We accomplished that. But we had to deal with all those repairs. It gave us that great education of dealing with everything that... We were able to utilize those, that skill set from the first one to apply to the future ones. And it made it each one, basically, we applied the lessons learned and got better each time. I love it, man. Yeah. You're, you're, I often uh, describe you as the poster child of house hacking in Denver. Yeah. I mean, great job. I think your story is very motivating yep. because what you did is duplicatable by pretty much anyone else out there that's willing to work hard. Think hard and do a bit of work while they're out there building building their real estate portfolio. But now you have what seven plus figures in equity. Yep. Your cash flow is eight thousand dollars plus a month, which is freaking insane. Yeah. Um, and what next year, year and a half, you're going to be essentially leaving your job yep. and retiring. Yeah. And I top know. off what two three years ago, you got your your real estate license. Yes. Um, because like, hey, I love this. I like doing it. Um, and you just want to help other people do it as well. So really cool story here about how like. House hacking has changed your financial freedom. Yep. It's also changed how you're focusing on your career path. You know, now it's, uh, I guess, Jeff 3.0 is coming out soon. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Stay when tuned. Jeff uses W2 <laughs> comes out here and is a full time agent, yeah. which I can't wait, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if I can't keep asking you, have you gotten fired yet? Uh, I mean, that most polite way. But um, have you gotten fired yet, Jeff? No, not yet. Damn it. All right. <laughs> soon, soon, we'll get you fired. So, okay. Oh, and also another point here is during this whole time, I kept my W2. Yep. So for bank qualifying for loans, it obviously helps with the yeah. W two, and don't just quit your job, become a full time fix and flipper. Well, that's yeah. the other thing too. You were like patient. You're yeah. like, hey, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. You're like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna do it for a couple more years and just really stack the deck and really just tuck things away and build some properties. Where a lot of people leave after two properties, yep. their job, and they hit that trap where now I have a trouble with getting financing done. You're like, you know what? I'm gonna keep doing this for a while because if I just follow this recipe. Hmm. Like you have a 99.9% .9 chance of success. Yep. 
like it's insane. Yeah. It's just uh, sticking to the path and, yeah. you know, didn't pivot from the plan and adapted my goals, but still had going back to the original goal, live for free and was able to scale up to be able to walk away from the W2. And I think that's a majority of people that are watching's goal is to leave their W2 and pursue a job that they want to do without worrying about income. Yeah. Well, Jeff, thank you for coming out here on the podcast to yep. share your story. I appreciate it. I love it. Hopefully it gave the listeners and viewers some motivation, some insight. If you guys have any questions for us, reach out. We're always happy to talk house hacking, talk investing, review your house hack stack portfolios. You can help buying your next house hack or your first house hack. Reach out to me, reach out to Jeff, reach out to our team here at Vision Advisors. We love helping you go out there and buy your next property and help you play the chase game to go out there and, win and achieve financial independence. So, Jeff, thanks so much, man. Thank you so much, Chris. Honor to be here.